You know, lots of people find it hard to spot a narcissist. And y'all got to understand they're in society, they're everywhere, and very manipulative. And it's really hard to spot them for those people who don't have the understanding or the education of narcissism, right? But you see, narcissists move very fast in relationships. It's not uncommon to hear, I love you, and or be bombarded with love songs, texts, memes, and a few weeks after meeting them, this is how fast they move, y'all. And they rush into sex, intimacy. They fast forward the relationship. They get their targets to fall for them before he or she can realize something is amiss. I believe this is also the reason they tend to be very good lovers, right? It seems that way. You see, sex is usually the hook in toxic relationships. Narcissists lack genuine personalities, so they mirror their targets. And if you find you have so much in common with a new person, your likes are their likes, and your dislikes are coincidentally their dislikes as well. But you have to raise your antennas. They may be mirroring you. This is the soulmate's hook, right? You'll also notice that they'll spend more time telling you who they are versus showing you. And as time goes on, you'll notice the words they use to describe themselves do not fit at all. It does not fit their personality at all. But they will fit yours. You see, they have this passive-aggressive behavior and irrational, unexplained anger. And also, these are big red flags. You have to pay attention to how a person treats you the first time you say no. And or when things don't go their way. If they give you the silent treatment, grow cold, or pull away, never overlook this. Most importantly, if someone pulls away or goes silent after you set a boundary, do not pursue them at all. This is how they groom you to be the chaser in the relationship. It's emotional abuse. It's manipulation, y'all. You got to pay close attention to people who portray themselves as victims. Nothing is ever their fault, okay? Everyone, including the family pet, has done them wrong. All their exes are crazy and mistreated them. They're great, right? But no one appreciates said greatness. Simply put, it's BS. No one should have a laundry list of bad experiences. If they do, you should run. Because they're the common denominator. You see, narcissists tend to have a history of failed short-term relationships. Believe it or not, it's hard for narcissists to find people to deal with them long-term due to their instability and poor behavior. They have superficial relationships and friendships. And I've noticed... They don't have anyone they genuinely are close to. This is due to their inability to bond and form true attachments to people. Their relationships are shallow and based on surface level BS. They'll refer to someone as their best friend. But you'll notice over time they barely speak of or that the person is never really around or only shows up when it's time to party, right? Or not. They may also speak down or poorly of their best friends or family members behind their back. You see, narcissists tend to be condescending, two-faced, and downright mean. Lots of people overlook this. And based on my experience, they cannot talk about deep subjects, right? Their fears or emotions or how a situation truly made them feel or what their childhood really was like in detail without lying about it. They don't want to go there. And I suspect it's really because they can't. They know themselves well enough. They can't connect. They also live in a world of dishonesty. They're very dishonest with themselves about who they truly are. So how honest could they possibly be with you if they lie to themselves, right? A poor relationship with their mother or any caregiver, their father, whoever took care of them, there is a poor relationship there, underlying issues between narcissists and their mothers, abuse, neglect, don't get along. It seems to be common, right? People that I've known who've displayed strong narcissistic tendencies all had bad relationships with their mothers. I think it's worth mentioning that their mothers also displayed strong narcissistic traits. I've noticed this. And I'm fully aware and understand that there are healthy adults who have toxic mothers. However, right, 
If you're spotting several red flags in an individual, including this one, pay closer attention. They're selfish. And some are selfish from the very beginning. Some start out generous and slowly begin withholding. Some act helpless and needy. They manipulate people into doing things for them, but never give back. It's not only financial and material selfishness either. They're selfish emotionally, affectionately, conversationally, sexually, and with their attention as well. I've witnessed this firsthand. They withhold validation and support. I mean, everything has to be about them, their needs, their wants, and everything happens on their terms. Anger, rage, silent treatments, and also disappearing acts are common too when they don't get their way. And let's not forget pathological lying, y'all. Narcissists are professional liars. It's their second nature. If you call them out, they'll have no issue staring deeply into your eyes as they tell you another lie. You hardly ever get the truth, if ever. Even with unchallengeable proof of it, you, you can have the proof of the truth. And they'll hold on to that lie. It's actually quite fascinating to see them in action. And once you know who you're dealing with, they also have an uncanny ability to provoke doubt in you, even when you know the truth, because their lies are so convincing. See, we have to be aware of people who do not seek conflict resolution, and many narcissists enjoy drama and chaos. Remember, these are high-conflict personalities. Many of them need to argue and fight. Peace to a narcissist is what chaos is to a non-disordered person. Unsettling. This is why they repeat behaviors that trigger a negative response. They need tension and anger and high out-of-control emotions. They're known for calling people crazy, drama kings, drama queens, insecure. You name it, they'll call it to you. But they'll never admit what they did to provoke these responses. And when you attempt to discuss or resolve something they said or did, they'll gaslight you, stonewall you, or flip it back around on you. You see, they are extremely disrespectful, rude, and they lack self-awareness. They have an issue with being called out on their behavior, and they project, deflect to avoid accountability. Normal people want to get along for the most part, right? So they seek fair compromises with conflict arises, right? I mean, as soon as conflict arises, what do normal people do? They want to seek resolution. They want to get it over with. They want to talk it out. They want to find out what the issue is. They want to work it out. But narcissists, they just want to win. And conflict is their niche. This is how many, many narcissists get their way. They wear people down via conflict. Let's not talk about immaturity. Oh, my goodness. You guys, it's one thing to be playful and lighthearted in an appropriate setting, right? As an adult, it's something completely different to be immature. Narcissists suffer from arrested development. So we know that they're temporal tantrums, right? They do not know how to respond to situations, or people, stress, or life appropriately. They have a childlike mindset. I've seen this, and it's horrible to watch. They truly believe everything is about them and have no concept of the needs of other people. And see, by nature, children are takers. They have no concept of reciprocation. They believe that their parents and everyone else exist to meet their needs, right? And when their needs aren't met or they don't get what they want, they become mean and throw tantrums. But we see this in children. Narcissists cannot think outside of themselves and their wants and needs like children. They're completely unaware that people are individuals with their own agency, needs, and wants, and opinions. They truly believe people exist to serve them. They believe their job is to receive their children trapped in adult bodies who cannot consider anything or anyone other than themselves. And this is how they behave. And above everything, trust your intuition, you guys. Because narcissists give an uneasy vibe. They try very hard to appear cool, calm, and collected on the surface. But you can feel their energy. And if you're anything like me, listen. You can feel their energy. It's very off-putting. They also tend to have more noticeable negative qualities than most people, right? But you have to stop justifying and making excuses for them in order to see things clearly. See, we have to accept people for who they are and not for who we want them to be. You have to observe and listen and trust yourself. 
No one should be allowed to grant themselves a position in your life, right? You have to vet people carefully. Because when you vet people and you decide if they'll be a liability or an asset to you. You know, you have to take cues from your body. If you ever feel like your mood is changing or you feel anxious or your stomach feels like you have a knot in it in the company of someone, do not dismiss that. Because I did for a long time and that's not a good idea, y'all. Never dismiss it. And I'm pretty sure lots of you understand exactly what I'm talking about. How we get this knot in our stomach, right? We know something's off. Our body is trying to warn us. But what do we do? We dismiss it. And that's a big sign that you're in bad company. If you ever feel the need to ask yourself, who in the hell is this person? You may be dealing with a narcissist. You see, narcissists are painfully inconsistent. Their patho- that you know, their pathology, their dysfunction is 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 inconsistent, y'all. None of what they do makes sense. What they do and say in the beginning will never add up once the newness wears off. They leave you with tons of unanswered questions, namely, who the hell is this person? It's the biggest question you'll ask yourself. You don't feel that way when you're when you're interacting with normal people, right? Most people are consistent in their thoughts and behavior. You feel a comfortable familiarity with time. Narcissists cannot provide that feeling because they lack a true identity. And once they stop mirroring you, they get bored with pretending. You'll see you have no clue as to who he or she really is, y'all. And that is very scary. Because narcissists project who they are onto others. And if you're truly dealing with a narcissist, conflict is inevitable. It really is. And it's in conflict that they'll tell you the truth about who they are in the form of projection onto you. Tension quietly builds when you're close in proximity you know, to a narcissist. You, can, you can't always put your finger on it, but you'll feel it. Narcissists lack respect for others and their boundaries. They're also provocative and antagonistic. Oh, my God. So whether it's sooner or later, there will be an emotional explosion. And when not if things don't explode right away, they will. Because they'll begin to rage. You'll find yourself being called names that definitely does not apply to you. But it applies to them. You'll also be accused of feeling and saying and thinking and doing things you never felt, never said, never thought. And guess what? You never did it. All this is projection, y'all. This is what they do. And if you ever research narcissism or the things about narcissists, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've ever researched this topic, you'll realize in these moments that narcissists are telling you how they feel, what they've said, what they think, what they've done. The downside is when you haven't done the research and you don't know what you're dealing with, you allow this to maneuver to you. You will let them put this off on you. They will maneuver all this onto you and completely derail and unhinge you. You'll lose sight of what's happening because you'll be wrapped up in defending yourself and your character. You'll spend hours arguing, writing novels, texts, emails, refuting, justifying, explaining why all of this garbage you're being accused of isn't even true. You may even try to point out how, you know, this, this is not who you are as a person. Or how what they're saying applies to them and their behavior. Don't fall for it. It's a trap. It's done to devalue and confuse you by derailing the conversation. It takes the focus off of the narcissist and their behavior and places it on to you. It's simply another defense mechanism used to avoid shame, accountability, and responsibility while making other people the problem. You can't avoid getting caught in this by recognizing it for what it really is. A subconscious confession. That's all that they're doing. They're confessing who they are by projecting it onto you. You see, if someone accuses you of the very things they've clearly said and done, run fast and don't look back. Normal, healthy people don't do this, especially when they have proof, right? Right? You know who this person is, but they're projecting it onto you. Make it make sense. You can show a narcissist proof, right? That you've never done what they're accusing you of. And they'll still deny reality. 
They cannot face the truth about who they are. So they project it onto you. And this is when you should run and don't look back. And I'd like to add that normal people, normal, healthy, empathetic, loving people, don't do things like this. And normal people, some normal people actually do project, right? But they project good qualities onto a narcissist. If you've ever been with a narcissist at some point, you also project who you are onto them, right? It's the reason so many people have a hard time accepting who the narcissist truly is. You were projecting your goodness onto them. You were projecting your character onto them. You see, we have to believe people when they show us who they are the first time. We project all our good qualities onto a narcissist while they're projecting all this mean hatred and this deceitful behavior onto us. And we know for a fact that's not who we are. And this is why it's so hard for lots of people to leave a narcissist. You have a hard time believing this is who they are. Because you project all your good qualities onto them. And they've been mirroring you for so long, giving you you. And that's what makes it hard. But everything I've stated above, if you want to know if you're dealing with a narcissist, that's the behavior that you will get from a narcissist. If you're not educated about who they really are, that's the type of things that they will do. You guys, I hope I helped somebody. That's it for this video, you guys. Take the time out to like, comment, share, subscribe, and turn on those bells so you'll know when I drop another video. Until next time.